Chapter 18. Thinking up the final adventure. The day after Father told Bruno that he would be returning to Berlin soon, Schmuel didn't arrive at the fence as usual. Nor did he show up the day after that. On the third day, when Bruno arrived, there was no one sitting cross-legged on the ground, and he waited for ten minutes and was about to turn back home for home, extremely worried that he would have to leave out with without seeing his friend again, when a dot in the distance became a speck, and that became a blob, and that became a figure, and that in turn became the boy in the striped pajamas. Bruno broke into a smile when he saw the figure coming towards him, and he sat down on the ground, taking the piece of bread and the apple he had smuggled with him out of his pocket to give to Schmuel. But even from a distance, he could see that his friend looked even more unhappy than usual, and when he got to the fence, he didn't reach for the food with his usual eagerness. I thought you weren't coming anymore, said Bruno. I came yesterday and the day before, and you weren't here. I'm sorry, said Schmuel. Something happened. Bruno looked at him and narrowed his eyes, trying to guess what it might be. He wondered whether Schmuel had been told that he was going home too. After all, coincidences like that do happen, such as the fact that Bruno and Schmuel shared the same birthday. Well, asked Bruno, what was it? Papa, said Schmuel, we can't find him. Can't find him? That's very odd. You mean he's lost? I suppose so, said Schmuel. He was here on Monday, and then he went on work duty with some other men, and none of them have come back. And he... And hasn't he written you a letter, asked Bruno, or left a note to say when he'll be coming back? No, said Schmuel. How odd, said Bruno. Have you looked for him? He asked after a moment. Of course I have, said Schmuel with a sigh. I did what you're always talking about. I did some exploration. And there was no sign? None. Well, that's very strange, said Bruno, but I think there must be a simple explanation. And what's that? asked Schmuel. I imagine the men were taking to work in another town, and they have to stay there for a few days until the work is done. And the post isn't very good here anyway. I expect he'll turn up one day soon. I hope so, said Schmuel, who looked as if he was about to cry. I don't know what we're supposed to do without him. I could ask father if you wanted, said Bruno cautiously, hoping that Schmuel wouldn't say yes. I don't think that would be a good idea, said Schmuel, which, to Bruno's disappointment, was not a flat-out rejection of the offer. Why not, he asked. Father is very knowledgeable about life on that side of the fence. I don't think the soldiers like us, said Schmuel. Well, he added with something as close to a laugh as he could muster. I know they don't like us. They hate us. Bruno sat back in surprise. I'm sure they don't hate you, he said. They do, said Schmuel, leaning forward, his eyes narrowing and his lips curling up a little in anger. But that's all right, because I hate them too. I hate them, he repeated forcefully. You don't hate father, do you? asked Bruno. Schmuel bit his lip and said nothing. He had seen Bruno's father on any number of occasions and couldn't understand how such a man could have a son who was so friendly and kind. Anyway, said Bruno, after a suitable pause, not wishing to discuss that topic any further, I have something to tell you too. You do? asked Schmuel, looking up hopefully. Yes. I'm going back to Berlin. Schmuel's mouth dropped open in surprise. When? he asked, his voice catching slightly in his throat as he did so. Well, this is Thursday, said Bruno. And we're leaving on Saturday, after lunch. But for how long? asked Schmuel. I think it's forever, said Bruno. Mother doesn't like it at out with. She says it's no place to bring up two children, so father is staying here to work, because the Fury has big things in mind for him. But the rest of us are going home. He said the word home, despite the fact that he wasn't sure where home was anymore. So I won't see you again, asked Schmuel. Well, someday, yes, said Bruno. You could come on a holiday to Berlin. You can't stay here forever, after all, can you? Schmuel shook his head. I suppose not, he said sadly. I won't have anyone to talk to anymore when you're gone, he added. No, said Bruno. He wanted to add the words, I'll miss you too, Schmuel, to the sentence, but found that he was a little embarrassed to say them. So tomorrow will be the last time we see each other until then, he continued. We'll have to say our goodbyes then. I'll try to bring you an extra special treat. Schmuel nodded, but couldn't find any words to express his sorrow. I wish we'd got to play together, said Bruno. After a long pause, just once, just to remember. So do I, said Schmuel. We've been talking to each other for more than a year, and we never got to play once. And do you know what else, he added? All this time I've been watching where you live from out my bedroom window, and I've never even seen for myself what it's like. You wouldn't like it, said Schmuel. Yours is much nicer, he added. I'd still like to have seen it, said Bruno. Schmuel thought for a few moments and then reached down and put his hand under the fence and lifted a little, to the height where a small boy, perhaps the size of a shape of Bruno, could fit underneath. Well, said Schmuel, why don't you then? Bruno blinked and thought about it. I don't think I'd be allowed, he said doubtfully. Well, you're probably not allowed to come here and talk to me every day either, said Schmuel, but you still do it, don't you? But if I was caught, I'd be in trouble, said Bruno, who was sure mother and father would not approve. That's true, said Schmuel. 
lowering the fence again and looking at the ground with tears in his eyes. I suppose I'll see you tomorrow to say goodbye then? Neither boy said anything for a moment. Suddenly Bruno had a brainwave. Unless he began thinking about it for a moment and allowing a plan to hatch in his head. He reached a hand up to his head and felt where his hair used to be, but was now just stubble that hadn't fully grown back. Don't you remember that you said I looked like you? He asked Shmuel, since I had my head shaved. Only fatter, conceded Shmuel. Well, if that's the case, said Bruno, and if I had a pair of striped pajamas too, then I could come over on a visit and no one would be any of the wiser. Shmuel's face brightened up and he broke into a wide smile. Do you think so? He asked. Would you do it? Of course, said Bruno. It would be a great adventure, our final adventure. I could do some exploring at last. And you could help me look for Papa, said Shmuel. Why not, said Bruno. We'll take a walk around and see whether we can find any evidence. That's always wise when you're exploring. The only problem is getting a spare pair of striped pajamas. Shmuel shook his head. That's all right, he said. There's a hut where they keep them. I can get some in my size and bring them with me. Then you can change and we can look for Papa. Wonderful, said Bruno, caught up in the enthusiasm of the moment. Then it's a plan. We'll meet at the same time tomorrow, said Shmuel. Don't be late this time, said Bruno, standing up and dusting himself down. And don't forget the striped pajamas. Both boys went home in high spirits that afternoon. Bruno imagined a great adventure ahead and finally an opportunity to see what it was really, what was really on the other side of the fence before he went back to Berlin. Not to mention getting in a little serious exploration as well. And Shmuel saw a chance to get someone to help him in the search for his papa. All in all, it seemed like a very sensible plan and a good way to say goodbye.